So our next speaker today is a seasoned telecom executive with over 20 years experience in mobile solution development and delivery. Uh, Jim's currently CEO of Shoelace Wireless, a next-gen mobile networking and security software company focused on intelligent edge-based hybrid mobility solutions uh, to provide off-device traffic control or on-device traffic control, leveraging both licensed and unlicensed spectrum to ensure the best customer quality and experience while simultaneously reducing operator networking costs and providing new monetization opportunities. Uh, Jim will be joined today by Sacha Detsch from Deutsche Telekom. Uh, please join me in welcoming Jim, Mains, and Sasha Detsch to our virtual stage. Thanks, Phil. <clears throat> Appreciate that. Um, so what Sasha and I are going to do is go over some of the components of what we've been working on the past year with uh, uh, Shasi and the, the Magma team and with Deutsche Telekom on what we call the spectrum uh, building blocks uh, for augmented networking. Let me go ahead and go to the next slide. Go ahead. Sasha, you on? He was on a second ago. Sasha, if you check on mute. Can you hear me? Yeah, now we hear you, go ahead. Uh, I think it was my headset, that doesn't work. Okay, then um, without it. Um, yeah, good morning also for me. Um, yeah, uh, here we see one of the industry challenges that we actually have. Um, the, the, as we move towards the next G and the next G and the next G and the next G and getting more and more capacity within our networks, I think um, the demand the customers having to that for, for network capacity and speed in the networks is just um, rising more quickly as we could deliver and um, yeah. And then, you know, one of the things that Sasha and I talk about is it's a vicious cycle. So as soon as it's almost like a freeway system, as soon as a lane is built on a freeway, everybody's all happy, you know, you're moving around, going fast and then it gets congested. And what we see is the dynamic is the, as the networks get faster, the new device innovations come up that you know, larger screens or H, uh, AR, VR, which then gives interesting apps that drives more on the uh, network demand. And that was fine when we were going from you know 2G to 3G, 3G to 4G. Uh, but as you go to 5G, we've got interesting dynamics we'll talk about. Let's get to the next slide. Okay, yeah. So the traditional way that operate, mobile operators have been solving this, and you saw this in the U.S. with, uh, you know, one of the highest uh, uh, spectrum auctions in terms of acquiring more spectrum, where they buy equipment, you know, increase the spectral efficiency of their, their equipment. But that's uh, costs, you know, globally trillions uh, or hundreds of billions to trillion dollars. It takes years to deploy, it takes years to adopt. Um, you've got that vicious cycle upgrade uh, cycle going on. And then, like, as I mentioned, as you went from three to 4G, you know, that was a quantum leap, you know, a lot of users would, uh, you know, go on and want to pay for that extra. Uh, but when you went to unlimited plans, it becomes more challenging to say, well, how are you going to, you know, increase the uh, ARPU or household share of revenue and how best to monetize it? So the challenge is, is that, hey, the way we look at it, is it a technology problem or a business model problem? Um, it's a little bit of both, but what we're starting to look at is like, well, there's some smarter ways to do this or some ways that we can try uh, um, to improve some of the dynamics over here in terms of innovations around augmenting existing network capacity and leveraging both licensed and unlicensed spectrum. Yeah, and what one, what one thing is that we actually have done in the past is um, we mostly, when we look at our networks, we are looking from an inside out perspective it means we are looking into how can we increase our networks and how can we do more to get them at more bandwidth or uh, but what we actually not that and we we monitor our network we find out informations about our network but what we are actually not that good is is, is in finding out what what are the real customer demands that is um that is there and um so I think that, that there was something that we identified within our work was that there is the need to change the angle that we look to the problem. 
And um, what we come up with was yeah, just looking from the other side and um, checking the connectivity experience of the customer is one thing that it's kind of custom because um, actually it's not, it's not about um, just finding out how fast he, he is or something. It's also about understanding what other networks would have been around to maybe do kind of offload scenarios or something like that to enable the customer in that various moment with the very best connectivity that we can achieve either if it's mobile or if it's Wi-Fi or CBRS or private LTE or whatnot on connectivity will come up in the next years. I think it's, it's crucial that we understand that we have to look at it from a different angle. And what we are seeing is um, that um, already by today, if you look there, there is 80% of the time cellular data is used there is Wi-Fi networks available. So um, you could already today um, have a lot more offloading effects to, to Wi-Fi. And if you look to a, a, a common or, or to a normal day of a customer, you see that he's also spending most of the time on Wi-Fi. So if you're at home, I think most of you won't be in the, won't be in the cellular network. So you go to your home network using your Wi-Fi and um, then you commute go to work, there are uh, you in the work Wi-Fi, then you go to dinner uh, or for lunch or something, and then you work again and so on and so forth. So um, most of the time you are already um, offloading without um, really knowing it. And um, we have to understand that the whole connectivity experience that we, that we offer to our customer is not only the moments where we bring him to the cellular network, it's the whole thing that we provide him in, 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 this, in this whole connectivity thing. And um, yeah, there is, a lot of, um, there is a lot of unlicensed spectrum around us and um, we just need to be more, get more intelligent to um, harvest this um, capacity. And some other points that I'd make is that I think there's like, 30 million, I was on a call uh, uh, earlier this week, uh, 30 million access points added every year. Uh, and one of the challenges is when operators, what they tell me is when they went unlimited, unlimited plans, a lot of times, you know, when people are metered, they're always worried about going to plan and things like that. But with unlimited, hey, as soon as you have a problem with Wi-Fi, and we've all had problems, there might be a spotty part in our house or as we go from our house, everybody has the problem of going from your house to your car and you're trying to, you know, uh, either turn on a mapping application and you're in a video call and it's like you turn off Wi-Fi. And that, that was used to be able to be addressed in terms of turning on and off radio. But once the user turns that radio off, it removes all future or opportunistic uh, opportunities for an operator to leverage, you know, this ubiquitous uh, unlicensed spectrum. So one of the challenges that we're focusing on, you know, with the Magma project and DT is how do you have the user have worry-free connectivity and never have to turn, uh, worry about, uh, um, you know, they're connected as long as they're always best connected and always best protected. They're always safe on no matter what network they're going on. So, we started to do is the uh, key building block. So how do we bring about to be able to aggregate all this capacity? Well, first you need a converge core. So obviously, you know, when Shaw came along, when Magma came along, we were pretty excited. We were working on the TIP project and TIP Wi-Fi, and we heard about this and said, okay, this is what we've been waiting for. Uh, so that was the, the core part. And then we need low cost access points, um, whether they're Wi-Fi or RAN type of devices, but you know, Wi-Fi is so ubiquitous in there. So working with, um, uh, the TIP Wi-Fi group is, is finding, you know, solving that problem there. Then you need an intelligent steering on that client. So if you leave it up to the OS, you know, they're serving you know, a certain need and the carrier is not necessarily in control. So an intelligent agent that actually steers the traffic or aggregates the traffic, however the business policy would work. And the key thing is no OS mods, no infrastructure additions, you know, essentially put on a device and then intelligently steer it. So then we had the problem was okay, now, um, once you have that capability, we need to know, we need to collect information about these networks so we can crowdsource it. So we're not necessarily a single operator doesn't have the view of everything the user connects to. So you might have an operator that's your mobile cell provider, but you have a different fixed wireline provider. And so when you're on that fixed wireline, the mobile operator 
might not know anything about that. Vice versa, the, uh, the ISP doesn't know anything about that. So we working with uh, Sasha and his team and his uh, GSMA buddies, we came up with a concept, actually he came up with this name, I liked it, it was a standard data collection called Open Schema, and he'll talk more about that. And the key there is let's have a unified way of how we collect information both from the UE and the uh, uh, access point equipment. So it goes into a common repository, which has numerous benefits, we'll talk about it. Then, then with this, we need an easy way for capacity providers to join this type of uh, virtual network. So uh, the Berkeley professor talked about some of that stuff, so I'm interested in following up with her. Um, but the idea here is let's make it easy to add capacity. There's so much Wi-Fi capacity or unlicensed capacity, will even be more with private LTC BRS. So that's how do we harness that and leverage it? Uh, and then finally, going back to the unlimited type of uh, aspects of that, how to reward both the access providers to contribute their uh, capacity and the users who basically can make a choice. I, you know what, I'm going to, you know, just, you, I, I'm paying for unlimited, so I'm just going to use unlimited. Um, but that essentially was more of a self-centered point of view. So how do we get the users to say, hey, if you can help make the spectrum use more um, optimized or we call it eco uh, um, uh, mode, mode, almost like how power uh, supply works, and then they have benefit for that. So we're working on different schemes on that then you have huge amount of funds that are released up that the carrier can then invest in either differentiation or adding capacity in underserved areas, which is the whole goal. So why spend, you know, the operators I talked to, they're spending $10 billion in say a, a region, another one spend, and at the end of the day, there's no difference and they can't charge more. So that's not gonna help anything for anybody, especially if there's all this capacity. So those are the building blocks and we'll go into some details next. Oh, so here's the next. So the first, so what we did is we put this in, uh, working with Shaw and uh, 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 Lorkenberg from Carabina, uh, uh, Declan from uh, Spire, different uh, uh, groups went together and we said, hey, look, you know, to get an operator to deploy this type of solution is takes a long time. It takes, I've been in the business too long to know how long things take with operators, uh, but you can find innovative ones. And obviously we found uh, Sasha and DT um, to help move things along. So we started out with this concept called um, a neutral host, which I'll go into detail here. And the components are basically the, you know, what we have done to date is we have the magma uh, building block for the uh, uh, core. We have uh, low cost access point, both um, Wi-Fi and RAN. Uh, we have an intelligent client. Uh, one of the key things here is we also, not only is it trusted, but we can have untrusted uh, devices because we can crowdsource all that information. And that's where the HetNet open schema comes into play that helps us with the uh, steering. And then on top of that, we can add value added services, whether it be ad analytics, security, location based services. So this is kind of the initial uh, core of the system that we've been developing uh, uh, last year and, and actually have deployed in the wild. So that uh, Sasha can go into the details of open schema. Yeah, so actually, um, I, I worked since quite a while in DT on this, um, on the topic of crowdsource data and um, what is always a, a, a big problem or what is, um, yeah, a thing that is not that often done is um, that we collect the data or collect all data in the same place and have a, a, a general data lake for doing good um, connectivity decisions. And as we, as I mentioned before, this view from the outside to the inside is something that we are adding up here with this, uh, with this data collection. So uh, we are not only able to have the cells reporting back to Magma and not only um, some access gateways or other devices that are uh, physical network equipment. We also can have use UEs, so the user equipment, um, get, giving us data directly from the user's connectivity experience um, to explain us um, what we didn't know, because sometimes the reality on the device of the customer is, is really different to things that we can um, that we assume it is in our um, in our networks, and um, so having a central place like the orchestrator in that point, um, with the uh, where we can have all our data in, is a is an absolutely amazing thing to have um, to have a central view and uh, can then 
add on top something like um, location analytics or having dashboards looking for radio optimization and seeing directly effects of uh, what the client's doing and so on and so forth. You know, one of the things just to add a little bit here is uh, when we talked to the Magna team, we said, hey, a way to get in, I don't want to say a Trojan horse, but a way to get into the operators is they're all starving for that data. So, you know, Sasha can talk about is you have to buy data from multiple different data providers, the speed tests, Ooglas, the Tutelas, all these different people to try to get a holistic view of this. And that's timely and expensive. And oftentimes you don't get the raw data. So essentially having the uh, operator to have, you know, essentially Magma as a component to collect the data and then Magma as a component to manage the actual endpoints, you know, is a, as a accelerator to get the adoption. So that was the strategy that we, we worked on. And then you, they, we talked a little bit about this, but one of the things I wanted to cover was the network scoring. So one of the things in addition to a standard way to collect the data, how do we come up with a standard way to score the quality of a network, kind of like a MOS score for a voice? Uh, so we're working with Sasha. Uh, there's a bunch of people we'll talk about the end, but Domo, Sasha, Parallel Wireless, Boingo, a bunch of them on coming up with um, a QoS metric, both from the uh, uh, access point device and the UE to know, you know, is this a good network to come on? Because as you know, you know, as you move from one network to another, your OS switches in that. So if you know uh, beforehand, the quality of that network is not going to be good. Don't put a user on a bad network. Uh, which would then cause the user to shut off the radio. So uh, we're working on that project now that will be done in the end of the quarter. But the uh, key thing here is we contributed along with Sasha's tremendous amount of uh, contribution with you know years and years of development of the schema model and on some reporting work that he's doing into the Magma repository. So uh, we already have this in the GitHub. We have our collection agent. We open sourced our collection agent. It has the SDK, it has the source, uh, it has the spec and um, even like a sample app uh, type of thing. So that's all, and that's both for Android and iOS. So that's available in the uh, open schema. And we also set up a Slack channel uh, on the Magma channel, open schema. So if people who wanna know more, who wanna participate. One of the things that uh, we're doing with Lorcan in, in Ireland, and I'll talk about that too, is incorporating open schema into uh, apps so we can accelerate the ability to collect that information. I'll talk a little bit more about that. Actually, here it is. Uh, so this is now the, 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 uh, the live trial environment. So we took all that concepts that we were working on, getting it in a lab, getting everything on worked out, and we moved it on into the wild, real world setting. So working with uh, Lorcan's team in Carabiner, uh, Declan in Aspire, uh, we essentially set up uh, the Magma gateway there in the cloud and actually on-prem too. So we have both implement, uh, implementations. We have uh, right now around 40 access points that will go to several hundred in subsequent phases. Uh, open RAN's in there, uh, this authentication, both AKA and, uh, for uh, SIM, and uh, offload client and the data schema. So four of our building blocks already set up and running in that environment. We actually involve some of the um, uh, telecom infrastructure uh, ecosystem members. So we have Plume and uh, the TIP Wi-Fi when those uh, devices are available, those are actually in route um, to be deployed there. So this is exciting. So this is deployed both in Dublin. So Lorcan did a great job of convincing the city of Dublin and Sligo. They realized it's like, you know, how are we gonna help the digital divide? Uh, and also, can we bring new revenue opportunities? So city as a neutral host, uh, where MNOs could, uh, or MVNOs could roam onto this environment, uh, which is the phase two and three goals. Sasha? Yeah, um, so our actual working items um, that we are actually looking into for this year is um, um, one thing that we believe is that uh, we need to get easier ways to harvest that capacity. And um, we tried to build something together with, um, with the guys of uh, Zero Chain and um, the other team members to build something like a global connectivity broker where we have uh, smart contracts in place and uh, do get this, um, this um, Wi-Fi or um, CBRS or other networks in a roaming-like mode where we can easily uh, settle contracts between partners via blockchain. So I think um, we have heard about today about a broker concept I think it also has the word broker and it does some similarities, but um, 
it's more like uh, yeah, filling mutual agreements between parties in, uh, on uh, on a blockchain base. What we're doing here, and um, yeah, this is an actually an exciting project where we're actually working together on. And I think the next one is Jim. Yeah, so the next piece is in addition to that broker, remember I talked to you about, you still have to motivate the end user. So why should I why should I help out the carrier to offload my traffic onto unlicensed spectrum when it's in vain? Where's my data dividend type of thing? So we're working on interesting concepts that we've got a really lot of positive report in terms of, uh, you know, simple things like we call bytes for bytes, B-Y-T-E-S for B-I-T-E-S, you know, or uh, sustainability, you know, trade in, you know, based on your optimization, you earn eco bytes that, you know, the carrier will plant a tree in a rainforest. So we're working with different things. Eventually, when you save money and, and you know, what I talk to operators, if I save you 100 million a year, you should have no problem putting 10, 20 million dollar back so we can reward the users. So we're looking at that type of model, which will free up cash for the operators to expand, free them up to differentiate on some value added to our service, encourage and motivate the unlicensed capacity providers to join uh, the network and then have the ecosystem thrive. So, you know, essentially, uh, you know, want to try to build these six building blocks, I think are the core ones. There might be more, so by all means, you know, get on the uh, um, Slack channel there to give us some more ideas. And you can see from the client point of view, the the all the things that come together that we talked in the following previous uh, six steps. And so far, I mean, we had great participation. So, you know, again, thanks to uh, obviously DT and Facebook, because, you know, without them, you need to have those large entities, you know, we're little startups and, you know, how do you get these gorillas or elephants to move, whatever. And then um, uh, on the telephone infrastructure has been great. Uh, and then, uh, as I talked about numerous other ones, Carabiner, Aspire, Zero Chain, Plume, uh, parallel freedom fi freedom fi has been great in terms of some you know it's nice to do because like we we work in certain pieces and they say have you figured this part out on magma and they go yeah yeah so we had a call with them so thanks boris net experience has been great boingo and salona uh, domus is actually doing some interesting stuff with, uh, with us too in terms of the qos so this is just the beginning so the more we have collaborate the faster we can go yeah, and I think um, one thing that we that everyone every team needs to have is a kind of a goal and a mission. And um, actually, uh, one of our goals is get everyone affordable, affordable, affordably <laughs> connected. Um, yeah, um, it's important that we have a sustainable mobile internet future because and uh, leveraging all kind of available spectrum and doing it in a good and intelligent way for our customers um yeah and um to to close with the the um yeah words of the of the facebook connectivity um to get more people online and the next millions there thanks a lot and in the, in the slides that will be posted you can see some of the demos we had to show some of the use cases there you can get more intel on the architecture and so on so uh so Phil, I told you we'd catch up. So hopefully that helped uh, uh, speed things along there. Thank, thanks, Jim. Yeah. And that was that cross coordination between you know Germany and here. So thank you, Sasha, for staying up uh, a little bit longer there to do this. So thanks. Thanks. Truly a global event today. Thank you, gentlemen.